Hello everyone, welcome to the GOA Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, The Geo Ecologist. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing our channel and also for the earlier videos, you can go to our playlist section and check for yourself. And if you are interested in taking our paid courses, you can go to our website thegeoecologist.com or you can download our app The Geo Ecologist from the Play Store and you can check for yourselves the courses and the materials available on our website or the app itself. Now in today's session on political geography we are going to learn about the concept of geopolitics and several interesting theories related to the geopolitics. So watch the video till the end because this video is going to be very interesting and also it includes a lot of theories and perspectives of geopolitics. So let's learn. So now let's discuss about the various concepts and theories related to geopolitics. So if you look at this word carefully, geo that is earth, geography and the politics, this is combined together here. So you may see that this particular topic is also a fusion, a amalgamation of geographical concepts and the concepts of political science. So that is very interesting here. So geopolitics examines how geography shapes the politics. This is very interesting that how geography is shaping the politics while in political geography we consider the geographical space as prime. So how political geography we study that how politics shapes the geography. So this is a vice versa relationship that we observe. Furthermore if you observe geopolitics is largely concerned with what about the spatial analysis and requirements of a state while political geography examines the spatial conditions only. This is what is the prime difference. The point where we say state, it becomes geopolitics. But if we say political geography, it could be the spatial analysis, locational analysis, conditions, everything incorporated in geographical sense. So if you observe, this is an important triangle to look into as a conceptual framework. So here is geography, here is history, here is the strategy and there is an interlinkage, bi-directional relationship between them and here in the center is geopolitics overlapping all these concepts. So largely if you observe geopolitics this is the analysis of these interactions. These interactions could be historical in nature, diplomatic in nature, geostrategic in nature. So all these are very important that's why we say that it is geographical settings on one hand and political processes on the other hand. We see the interactions here in geopolitics. So now let's go ahead and see how this term emerged first. So the term geopolitics was coined in 1899 by a Swedish political scientist, a geographer and a politician whose name is Rudolf Kielin. So Rudolf Kielin established this idea of geopolitics and he was influenced by his predecessor that is Radzel. So if you observe there are many intellectuals whose name come in whenever you search geopolitics. So for example Alfred Mahan, then you have Hefford Mackinder, Frederick Radzel, Kielin himself, Hossefer, Nicholas Speakman and George Kinnan. All these people are very important scholars who gave numerous theories and concepts built our understanding of geopolitics. So if you observe, Kielin is very important and he defined that it is science of states. That is basically how life forms based on demographic, economic, political, social and geographical factors. This is what basically is the definition according to Kielin that like people like living beings emerge on several factors and they grow. Similarly, a state behaves like an organism based on so many factors and then this particular geopolitics is to be considered while analyzing it. So his influence was particularly strong in Germany where he gave his concept, his idea lives form, the state as a life form and it was influenced by Radzel's idea of social Darwinism. So Radzel's theory we are going to do in the subsequent video separately that is going to be social Darwinism organic theory of state but for now understand that in 1916 this was published and this was during the first world war situation. So it gained a lot of importance. Geopolitic as you say the particular word in Germany had a deeper and wider meaning 
and it has an ideological sense of expansion as well. So if you observe, this was taken up by another scholar and he is called Hosopher, another theorist, geopolitical scientist and he redefines it in political terms. So geopolitics is the new national science of the state. This is what he defined and unlike geography or political science, political geography, geopolitics always had a national bias. We say it's based on nationalism concept. Right. So if you observe, the evolution of geopolitics came from ancient itself, right from the days of Greeks and Romans, the age of empires. Aristotle talking about zones of habitability, zones of climate, determining basically the neighboring areas and then till Renaissance, we see this kind of concept flourishing. Then if you observe Immanuel Kant, he talks about climatic factors as well. So geographical factors and politics associated. Then further, what you observe in modern geopolitics, the emergence of 19th century geopolitics, the great Frederick Ratzel that we say German geographer, he makes it a specialist definition. He makes it a specialist defining moment in the history of human geography. So here state growing as organisms, the concept of living space, Lebensraum that is in 1901 he Gave. So this is where the turning point came in the emergence of the concepts of geopolitics. This is also called classical geopolitics many times. So understand this is an attempt to scientifically apply the laws of biology to state. That is what we say is organic theory of state. So states derive their national power, their capacity to survive in the international regime in international arena from their land only. So how much land you control, how big you become, how powerful you become internationally. This is the whole premise of this theory. So if you observe further, the three basic premise, the three basic direction or attribute of these German geopolitical theories are what you observe is the first one, the concept of living space, the ROM, which you mean that great power to have the space Right. If you don't have space under your control, you are not powerful. So living space is very important. And then you observe the concept of world iron given by later on Mackinder and Speakman's concepts. You observe the heartland and rimland theories. And then you have the north south combination given by Hosopher. So these three are the major directions shaping geopolitics in the first world war and second world war situation, which is very interesting and important. So if you observe here on the map, this is Germany for us. And then the idea was to expand Germany as much as possible on the land power so that the living space, the ROM could be increased and also could have a dominion effect, a domination on the world powers. This is what the idea was. So if you observe, there have been several theorists. So one of the theorists you've observed is Alfred Thayer Mahan. And this guy is basically a geopolitician and also a naval power specialist. He talks about sea power. So the influence of sea power upon history in his work in 1890 he gives you idea that if you have to lead over the world if you have to take advantage if you have to have an hegemony you must have good sea power right this is what is the influence here so he talks about these six conditions to have sea power. What are the six conditions? If you can see the list for yourself, advantageous geographical position, serviceable coastlines, then you have extent of territory, population large enough to defend its territory, then you have society with aptitude for sea and commercial enterprise, and government with influence and inclination to dominate the sea. So, Mahan's idea is that if you really want to dominate on the world geopolitics, you must be great at sea power. So, this is what he talks about, especially in context to European countries. Continent. So if you see the influence here, Alfred Mahan, who was also the director of the US Naval War College, he talks about this idea that France had a double side system. It means it's having two front. One is the front here, which is near this canal that you say is English Channel. And then here is the Mediterranean Sea front. So it is basically power is divided here. This is what he says that this is the reason for vulnerability of France, right? And the Royal Navy conversely could concentrate its power on a single theater of operation. So that's why Britain was more powerful because it was united in terms of its approach on sea power. 
right? Then if you observe the next theorists in 1904, that is your Mackinder. So we have already made a separate video on Heartland theory and Rimland theory already. You can go to the playlist and watch it. Here, what you observe here is the focus on the land power in 1904, which he shifted a little to sea power as well by 1943. So he changed his theory. He modified his theory, Mackinder. But the whole point was, again, domination of the world, geopolitics. So Mackinder's Heartland and Rimland theory later on by Speakman becomes really important. But in between came who? Hossifer, whose ideas really influenced the German Nazi politics. So this is the concept of geopolitics influenced by the development which is Adolf Hitler's expansionist strategy. He was the main architect behind this, the main brain behind it. Main Kampf was basically the idea of Hitler based on the concept of living space by Ratzel, Lebensraum and the geopolitics by Killen, whose politicization happened by Hossefer in the terms of geopolitics. So if you observe here, geopolitics, basically the concept given by Hossefer, contributed to Nazi foreign policy, chiefly in the strategy for justification of living space increasing your territory the german expansion right so the basic idea was organic state lebensraum autarky pan regions and land power and sea power dichotomy these are the major building blocks of the classical geopolitical theories which influence the first and second world war situation around the world especially in europe so if you observe hossipur's pan region theory what does it say it's not south theory so it says that this theory basically talks about pan regions by analyzing the growth of america japanese and others prior to world war ii so what is the situation it says for the first point that according to this analysis western europe russia japan and us all of them have created their own pan regions like this so region one region two region three and region four now what you see here is the small germany here and what he tries to say that if you want to control over the world then you must expand your pan region like america has done like pan russia is there like japanese area is there so what do you observe that here the spheres have been marked in this so this is the four pan regions if you observe the us had already established its pan region here then if you observe russia had already a good territory under its control in central asia and siberia as well then if you observe japan in the process of creating a huge empire in asia east asia and then if you observe the point was that germany should make its own pan region so if you observe here carefully the german pan region was supposed to be controlling this particular area of the world completely and also by the time later increasing its expansion and control over the world. This pan region theory was very important in inciting this idea of expansion in the minds of Adolf Hitler. So if you observe, this is where pan regions theory and concept is actually leading to changes in space. That's why geo politics right so if you observe american geopolitics also had a climate racist branch as well if you remember the name of ellsworth huntington right civilization and climate his book and if you observe that he talks about climatic zones and people living there have a different attitude towards the power towards the territory so this he says is a very interesting approach then if you observe speakman's concept which is an alternative to mackinder's heartland theory he argues that an anglo-american sea power and russia land power alliance could prevent germany from controlling eurasian coastal regions and later on he says that who controls rimland will be more powerful not the heartland so he emphasizes more on the rimland and also the sea power for having a hegemony over the world so if you observe this is carefully looking into the rimland areas it does not focus on heartland rather it says rimland is more important for the control over the world so now further if you observe today's situation in the world right so what's happening here another concept comes in 2004 the string of pearls concept why is it a geopolitical concept if you look into this is a concept given by united states political scientists and researchers in 2004 what is the string of pearls if you look into this map the chinese hegemony in the indian ocean and asia pacific look at these centers these if you observe carefully is trying to look into all the across 
Africa to Asia a control through the port developments, investments and several others. The networks that China is going to create and it has already created across POK also if you see in the Central Asia ports being controlled. So this string of pearls is reference to the modern geopolitical theory in today's world in 21st century. So geopolitical theories are now being reoriented. New things are happening in South China Sea. I'm sure if you're watching the news, you look into what is happening with Taiwan in China and I'm America there right what is happening with Russia Ukraine there so if you observe you'll find that all these policies have become important and if you remember Chinese economic corridor one belt one road policy these things have been part of this string of pearls policy so the world as of now how the world is looking like if you see geopolitical theories and the world today this is 2022 December thing and if you observe this is blue color this is your NATO right so this is NATO to operated regions of the world largely then you have the treaty and allies these blue colors here and then you have the red colors which is BRICS right so you have Brazil China India and Russia these are all red colors and then if you observe this green deep green color is Israel Pakistan and India as neutral intermediaries between Russia and Ukraine war so if you observe this is where we stand geopolitically in today's scenario and the world is really changing and this is 100 years that you see here right from from about 1890s to 2022 23 if you observe this is what the geopolitics of the world has done to the political geography that we study so that's a very interesting concept so keep looking at it so now when we have discussed about various concepts and theories of geopolitics around the world in today's session in the sessions to come we'll be making it more interesting in political geography so stay tuned stay subscribed keep watching and sharing do learn and do right for yourself if you are preparing for civil services examination all my best wishes to all of you but don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also please press the like button if you really like the videos